Last week on 10 Things, we gave you the 10 most common fish keeping mistakes. These are mistakes that are made by pretty much every fish keeper out there. For this week's 10 Things, we thought we would take things to a whole other level and talk about our personal mistakes that we've made in this hobby, but not limit it to just us. I reached out to 30 of my favorite fish keeping YouTubers and asked them to send me a clip of them telling the story of their biggest mistake that they've ever made in the hobby. Of course, when you ask 30 people for something, they're not all going to be able to do it, but I was able to get enough to do two of these episodes. So here are the biggest fish keeping mistakes made by YouTubers, part one. Okay, so this is my channel. I guess it makes sense to start with me. The biggest fish keeping mistake that I've made that I'm willing to admit to anyway, takes me back to my 21st birthday. A dear friend of mine bought me the best gift anyone could ever buy me. He knew I was obsessed with arowanas. He found, I don't even know where he found it, a two and a half inch little baby black arowana. Uh, this was a brand new arowana. It looked like it had just dropped its egg sac. It was a micro fish, but it was adorable and he paid a lot of money for this fish. The problem was I had like five tanks at the time and they were all occupied by other fish. So I had to figure something out on the fly because this was like midnight when he gave me this fish. I had to figure something out, somewhere to put the fish temporarily until the next morning when I could figure out a more permanent home for the fish. Like I said, I was running five tanks at the time and one of the tanks was a 20 gallon that I had a brood of baby convict cichlids in. When I say babies, they were like a half of an inch long. They were tiny newborns. So I figured, you know what? That's gonna be the best place to put this fish. Well, I think you know how this story ends. I woke up the next morning and all I found in the tank was literally the spine, the bear, no meat on it, just a very finely cleaned off spine of that arowana. Those little micro convicts had swarmed together and completely annihilated this fish. And I was devastated. Let me tell you that the look on my friend's face when I told him what had happened is something that still haunts me in my dreams to this day. Doug, I'm sorry, it was the best gift ever. I'm 44 and this still bothers me. So the moral to this story is convicts are jerks, <laughs> even the little babies, but no, seriously, if you have a situation where you're faced with making a really critical decision, don't rush through it. Don't let this be something where you just throw a fish somewhere and say, I'll handle it in the morning because you could have your world come down on you like it did for me that day. I was devastated and yeah, our friendship has never really been the same ever since then. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. What was my biggest fish disaster? Well, it all centered around this. This is Dechlorinator. It's super important. It's especially important when you're going to be setting up a brand new tank and putting fish in, with cycled media of course. Well I had a friend give me some perch and we were going to set up a tank that represented the northern Illinois ecosystem. It was going to be a cool water tank. So I set up this 55 gallon grow out tank and it had rocks and I thought it represented the northern Illinois ecosystem fairly well. I put the fish in, but I'm a busy man. I had places to be, so I left. And I came back about 10 hours later. And I came downstairs eager to see how my fish were doing and they were all dead. Why? I forgot to put this in. Rookie mistake. Set up a million tanks. I forgot to put the dechlorinator in and there was chlorine burn and it basically destroyed their gill tissue and I killed them all. Again, we are all capable of making mistakes. Sometimes it just pays to take our time. It was a lesson well learned and a mistake I haven't made since. My biggest mistake in fish keeping? Wow, um, I have no idea. I've made so many mistakes over the years, so many disasters and tragedies. 
they're hard to talk about, but one in particular sticks out that could have been really easily avoided, so I'll share that with you. And that was, uh, I had a tank, some of you might remember it, it was a dwarf cichlid tank that had some, what are they, it had some gold tetras in it as well. I was filming a video for how to get rid of algae using hydrogen peroxide, and I wasn't paying attention, I was spraying my hydrogen peroxide away, you know, looking back at the camera, filming, doing all that stuff. I didn't realize that every pump I was shooting into the tank was two mils of hydrogen peroxide. I had thought that it was half a mil. I didn't double check it, I just assumed. And that assumption cost me all of the fish in that tank, and that's why you never saw that tank be on the setup video. So, pay attention to what you're doing, and you know, especially if you're gonna be using any kind of chemicals in your tank, just always double check everything and pay attention or else you'll pay the price. Hi fishy folks, this is Michael from Michael's Fisher and John asked me to tell you about the biggest mistake I ever made in fish keeping. And I have to say it was about 13 years ago, my 19 year old son was six. My neighbor was giving away a 30 gallon tank complete. So he set it up in his room, stand, everything. Set it up in his room, went to the local fish store and bought a bala shark, a red tail shark, some quarries, some neons, probably some mollies. Threw them all in the tank and of course a week later everything was dead. And so, uh, you know, that weekend we went to another local fish store and he kind of mentioned the cycle to us. And, you know, we started to stock it correctly, but in about a month or so I decided it was time to clean the filter. And so that's exactly what I did. I took the filter out, threw everything inside out, washed it with soap and water, let it air dry, rinsed it again, let it air dry again, put all new stuff in, and in a week, everything was dead. And I probably did that two or three times before I learned you don't need to clean the filter. The biggest mistake in the hobby, this probably was around 16 or 17 years ago. This was before there was a lot of information on the internet. Now we did have the internet, but it was that slow dial up stuff, not like what we have nowadays. And uh, I was just kind of getting into African cichlids at the time. It was probably 2002 or 2003. And I had a tank similar to this here and I uh, had a bunch of uh, beautiful African cichlids that were juvenile. and. I bought what I thought was another cichlid, an African cichlid. I didn't, again, didn't have a whole lot of information. And it was sold to me as a cichlid that would do well with my Africans. It was a beautiful orange colored fish that looked uh, kind of like my peacocks. And it kind of grew a little bit larger and um, larger still. I noticed that a couple of my fish were missing. Now again, my Africans were small. They weren't, they weren't full grown at the time. And uh, eventually, little by little, all of my Africans disappeared and I was left with one fish and the fish got huge. And it was not an African cichlid, it was a red devil. So that was my mistake, uh, buying the wrong fish without doing the research, not fully understanding what I had and uh, taking the store's word for it as far as uh, what I bought. And I ended up with one fish that I didn't want and ended up rehoming him, took him to the store and had to start all over. So that was a big mistake and I've never made that again. Hello everyone, my name is Kasha from the YouTube channel Creative Cat Keeping and I'm going to share with you one of my top mistakes in fish keeping. And that was when I first set up my very first Beta bowl. Unfortunately, before I even got a tank, I unfortunately started off with a bowl. I never really talked about this because it's kind of embarrassing. Um, I was it was so long ago, but for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to not only put a beta in a bowl long term without very frequent water changes, but I also put a pleco in there. And um, luckily, uh, with the at the time we didn't have internet. Um, but we did have the library, so I did get to check out a couple books, and I did read a little bit, and we, I ended up moving the little beta and the little pleco into a tank. So the story had a happier ending, and it didn't go as badly as I would have thought it would. But yeah, that is kind of my worst mistake ever, guys. Don't don't do that. Don't put a pleco in a beta 
in a bowl. Bad idea. Hello everyone, Bob from Steamfoot Aquatics here, and I'm gonna tell you about one of the biggest mistakes I have made in the hobby. This happened about a year ago. It still kind of makes me mad even thinking about it, but I'm gonna tell you the story. So it has to do with this pump right here. I'm doing a water change. At the time I had 25, 30 aquariums and I was just going around putting this pump in aquariums and draining water as fast as I can. Well, what had happened is the strainer here had fallen off after I put it in a tank. Wasn't paying attention, just too concerned about refilling and just getting things done and drained about half the tank before I looked in and realized that the strainer was down in the substrate. And it happened in a tank of Pseudomagill Luminatus, which is why you don't see very many of those on my channel anymore. If it was just the vibration or the noise of the pump, whatever, they were curious, they would swim over, get sucked up, chopped up, and then fed through the hose here. As Soon as I saw it, I was so mad at myself, I ripped the pump out, and I just could not believe how many rainbow fish I killed. I've actually never even talked about it before because, I don't know, it just really makes me sad and mad, but we are talking about our biggest failures today, so live and learn, I guess. Hopefully you guys don't repeat my mistakes. You can see now there's all this glue around there. I got out my hot glue gun and that thing's never coming off now. That was definitely one of my worst days in, in fish keeping. I don't know how many rainbow fish, probably, I think I think I had like 20 rainbow fish and I ended up with just four or five after that disaster. Thank you, John and Lisa for having me on your channel. I hope this uh, story will save some future or current fish keepers and on to the next story. I made a mistake in a fish room once, lots of times. The biggest and most costly mistake I ever made in a fish room was not being prepared when the power went off. The temperatures in all of my tanks dropped and I was left with some scary moments that initially I thought I had escaped unscathed. Time would tell that a particular group of fish I had just couldn't stand the temperature drop. Temps got down into the mid 60s and I knew it was dicey. Over the next few days, I started losing my N-class Endler colony, and before it was over, not one of them was left. I did manage to get some emergency measures in place, but all in all, it was too little too late. So here's what I've done in the aftermath to beef up my emergency response to power outages in the fish room. My emergency kit includes USB aeration for filtration, heat packs, a lid and insulation, a mylar safety blanket, a mover's blanket, a plastic tarp, and several plastic clamps. And I keep all these materials stored at room temperature. One of the biggest mistakes that I have ever made personally in this hobby has to do with that Malawi tank right over my shoulder. I didn't trust the process. I took three fish that could have easily be quarantined, but I was too much in a hurry, and I threw those bad boys in there, and then ultimately I lost 10 fish. With the size of the aquarium, trying to medicate, not trusting the process of quarantine, just rushing to get the tank on video. Trust the process. The biggest mistake, not trusting the process. Thank you so much to KG Tropicals for having me on, I greatly appreciate it, and I wouldn't end it any other way, but by saying, Ahala! Hi guys, it's Scott. Hey guys, it's Liz. And we are King and Queen Cichlids, and we are very honored to be on KG Tropical's channel. It allows us to be seen by a large audience that may not know about King and Queen Cichlids, so welcome and thank you for allowing us to be on your channel. Now, do you know what we're here for? Nope. John has asked me to talk about the biggest mistake I ever made in the hobby. Oh boy, you've got a bunch to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> I really do have a bunch to choose from, but the one in particular that came to my head was the time I tried to take your Paratilapia polyni and put it in with my Heliochromis uh, elongatus, the five-star general. Yeah. Uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> Uh, I'm a kind of uh, hobbyist that likes to keep species, tanks, if you ever get a chance to look at my fish room, I have perichromas with perichromas, amphilophus with amphilophus, uh, and I try to keep each tank with a single pair. So I had this situation where I had the Paula 9, I had the 5 star general, and I was like, 
man, I wish I could put them together because generally they're both from Africa, although one's in Madagascar, which is an island, and the other one's in Western Africa. So I thought I could throw those two together. Man, I spent like a couple of hours aquascaping this 90 gallon tank to the T, put them both together, left the fish room, and when I came back the next day, the Five Star Journal had just torn that pollen eye to pieces. Um, so, <laughs> lesson learned. Don't ever put two fish together that you're unsure about in a tank and leave them by themselves. And secondly, make sure you have an extra tank available so if things don't work out, like it didn't work out in this particular situation, that you can split them apart, take the aggressor out, put them in a, a different tank, and then try to figure things out later. So, I am so sorry. To <laughs> It happens. That Paul and I had won many, many awards for you, yeah. correct? He was a beautiful fish with a magnificent personality. Yeah, so that was my biggest mistake, not only because of that, but because it was hurtful to Liz. So, uh, that was my baby. It was your baby. <laughs> so he never healed, and eventually, I guess about a year or so later, he, he passed. passed. Yeah. So it was all because of that poor decision. So that's my biggest mistake. Remember, guys, if you ever put fish together, make sure you stick around to make sure that they don't get aggressive with one another. And if they do, have a spare tank. Thank you so much, John, for allowing us to be in your channel. It's a huge honor. And rock on. We love your videos, man. It's great information, and they're always entertaining. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.